Um, as a former student of law myself, and studying human rights, I think one of the basic human rights, as we all know, which is enshrined in the international human rights document, is the right to health care for everyone. We have a history, uh, and a fine history, of statements and actions undertaking to protect the health of the population, including delivering health care services that meet their needs. But what we don't have is evidence of ensuring that who you are, where you live, and what you earn will not determine your health. We don't ensure that all those who require healthcare services access them when they need them. Uh, many of you will probably be aware that earlier this week, TASC published um, a, a, an important piece of work on the level of health inequalities in Ireland. And what we know, of course, is that who you are and where you live fundamentally impacts on your health in Ireland. Another critical determinant of health is healthcare. And we're going to focus on that not because it will solve everything, but because it is a first step. So today we're launching the document that you have in front of you, uh, Healthcare Guaranteed, the Right to Health in Ireland. Ireland signed up to the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights in 1973, and then ratified that in 1989. Uh, that convention includes a commitment to protect the right to the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health. It should be recognised. That's not an aspirational document. Human rights law isn't simply aspirational, no matter how much, at times, uh, governments across the world might like to portray it as such. These are legally binding obligations to which Ireland voluntarily committed. These are obligations that our government made on our behalf to guarantee us, as people living in this country, the highest attainable standard of health. There is still no provision for the right to health in Bundrup and Heron or in Irish legislation. However government decides, or any government or any state decides to deliver health services, how that's decided must be grounded in and compliant with the obligation to guarantee the right to the highest sustainable standard for, uh, to health for anybody living in that country. So that must be the primary consideration in how government makes the decisions about how services are uh, provided, how resources are allocated, and indeed for who provides that service. Uh, the obligation on Ireland, on our government, is to ensure that everyone in Ireland can access healthcare services. The critical question is how the implementation and operation of these services impacts on individuals' access. So the critical question is, are we configuring our services to guarantee, insofar as that's possible, within the available resources that we have, crucially, the best possible health outcomes for people who need to access health services? So what are we looking for? What's at the heart of this campaign for us? What we want <coughs> is for government to commit to an individual legal guarantee of equal access to essential health care, no matter who you are or what you can afford. Last week it was, we had Paul Hunt, the former UN Special Rapporteur on Health uh, here in Ireland, speaking at an event that we'd organised. He described that as uh, the best kept secret in Ireland. It all sounds great, but an individual legal guarantee to give that to every citizen in this state, would that just literally open the gates for everybody to go to the courts? Our systems of justice exist to, inter to intervene when something goes wrong, when somebody experiences an injustice. So it seems ridiculous, frankly, to me to suggest that somehow we shouldn't provide for appropriate legal guarantees that set out very clearly what the state's obligations are, that guarantees rights to people, that makes government and those who are delivering services accountable to people. Can any government, whichever, whether it's the current one or one 50 years down the road, can actually just as a defence say, well within the resources we have, this is the best we can do for you, sorry. Human rights law says you have to work within the maximum available resources that, that you have in your grasp. But it also says that you have to prioritise the most vulnerable. This isn't about a more costly system. This is about a more effective, efficient system that's focused on health need and health need alone. The case for this kind of reform, the case for this guarantee, is more compelling at a time of economic crisis uh, than at a time of plenty, because we simply don't have the money to waste. Ireland committed to economic, social and cultural rights 20, 30 years ago, and we've not had that debate on how to enforce economic, social and cultural rights. But fundamentally, the responsibility is with Parliament and with the Executive. How do you overcome that if, if the legislature doesn't legislate? Is there something very basically hypocritical about signing up to a binding international legal obligation and then pretending it doesn't exist or ignoring, ignoring it in, in, in national legislation? We have uh, traditionally, culturally, in our, in, our, in our political psyche almost, because we keep referencing the first all as that you know, foundation moment for this state. Well, at the heart of that, at the heart of the thinking then, was a really radical, progressive approach to notions of rights and state obligations. This is a starting point to talk about the right to health. And it really was a big debate 
for amnesty and for a team to go, what part of health do you, do you start from in Ireland? We did a national opinion poll polling with them, Vansam, 84% of people who responded said that they believed the right to health was as crucial a human rights issue as the right to fair trial, for instance. Have you had any communication back from the Department of Health? We haven't had feedback on the campaign ask of the legal guarantee. That's something we have to pursue with the department. And what we're saying is that, you know, it's crucial at this point now in our history, given how, how much we've gone through, I suppose, as we've tried to deliver effective healthcare systems, that at the basis of any reform should be that commitment action, that there is a guarantee of equal access to health care. We have to look at the resources that the state has and absolutely they have to be used to deliver rights. In terms of the allocation, I think it's really important to remember that these are the legal commitments that government has made. There's a question over how you prioritise what spending comes first and our argument is that delivering on human rights obligations should be the first stop. We've been talking about accountability for the last couple of years so we need to start to just we, we need to start to define very clearly what that means and the level of accountability that we require from government and from the state when it comes down to areas like the delivery of these crucial uh, human rights. I think congratulations to everyone in Amnesty, to Colin and to Rosen for putting this together. Thank you all very much for coming. That's it. Yeah.